So the next one that I want to talk about is vitamin C and these last two to three supplements that I've been discussing I would say the last three basically starting at the uh, serapeptase and on these are all my absolute absolute favorites so um, including the folic acid I think everybody should be taking vitamin C because I think it's near nest or near impossible to take enough of it in the just by digesting it alone. An absolute essential antioxidant for us to be getting enough of this every day in order to ensure that our bodies are healthy and we're able to fight off infection naturally. And for that reason, I have been an avid user of not only supplementing vitamin C, but I have been getting infusion therapy for years. When I was at my sickest points, as well as Kevin, we were both going in to get intravenous vitamin C infusions. And if I can post some pictures of us doing that, I will do that or video. Um, but the reason why this was so important for us is because our bodies were at one point trying to fight off the line. When first of all, let's get into the point that when you start to fight off Lyme and you're going through all these Herxheimer reactions, um, this takes a lot out of your body and you become very, very sickly. And there were times where I felt like I was not going to make it. And of course with Kevin, his, as opposed to being really extre extremely tired and getting fevers and all that, he was developing more brain fog. Lyme, a lot of people think, oh, you take the antibiotics and you're great and you feel you feel great and it's actually not like that if anything you get a lot worse before you get better and I always kind of attributed how well we were doing to getting worse before we got better and that did seem true for us like I again don't believe in really bringing people to the brink of death like some Lyme's doctors will do will bring you to the brink of death and then bring you back to life I'm more about kind of killing and extracting and getting rid of this stuff out of your body all at the same time I know some of them are really good about doing that now but in the past and you know what, I'm guilty of this too. I did a lot of killing in my body, but not enough detoxifying of these toxins, which are called mycotoxins, which are produced by killing the co-infections as well as the Lyme itself. So anyway, what helped me get through a lot of that and what helped me get through a lot of the inflammation, because of course vitamin C is also very anti-inflammatory, was to go in and go to a clinic and get intravenous infusions of vitamin C. I at one point was getting other things infused directly into my veins as well, like minerals. And when I, and the reason why somebody also would want to do this, if you're struggling with something like Crohn's colitis and you're not able to eat anything, there is no way you're getting enough vitamin C. Nonetheless, the rest of your vitamins and minerals and even your electrolytes for that matter. So in one instance, when I got sick for that full year and I could not eat anything, I basically was surviving off of infusions. And in that case, I was taking a mineral infusion. I was getting my B's this way. I was getting my C's this way. I was even having to take saline because I could not even consume water. Um, and I was completely dehydrated from going to the bathroom 20 times a day. So that is one of the biggest reasons why I started to try and look for a supplement that would be equivalent to taking an infusion because if you've ever done an infusion and I will just give you an example about how powerful vitamin C can actually be when Kevin was going blind the only thing that would bring his vision back was for him to rush off to our naturopathic doctor uh, and our health coach and get an infusion done when he would do an infusion his vision would literally come back within about half an hour and in infusion I you know I know a lot of people are taking vitamin C supplements and the thing about vitamin C supplements is a lot of the stuff out there in my opinion is coming from ascorbic acid um, which is synthetic and it's not the greatest form I do take a supplement that I'm going to be talking about next but it is the actual patented technology that makes this ascorbic acid so highly absorbable because I know a lot of people are taking like those powders that you mix into your water or your juice and they're drinking that and or taking tablets or powders and all that stuff you know what that's all fine and dandy and those are great there's a lot of research to suggest that half of the vitamin C that we consume or we take in supplement form is being um, eliminated through your urine anyway so I think you're it's, it's kind of a waste and the other idea is that some of these forms are not very absorbable so they're not making it into your bloodstream and they're not making it into your it's not making it directly into your cells so 
that's one of the reasons why we continued taking infusions. But then I was actually at my health coach's office and she actually introduced me to something called it's a company by the name of Live On Labs and they carry an entire lipospheric line. So this lipospheric, it's this lipospheric line is a patented technology by this company specifically. A lot of people are trying to knock off this technology right now and I've tried a few others and it does not come close to what th these people are doing. I am a crazy advocate for this company. I want to eventually become my own distributor for it because I believe in it so much and I've got like everybody on it in my family and they have seen remarkable differences in their health. In the instance like when we all started taking the taking this supplement specifically, none of us were getting colds anymore, none of us were getting flus. The other thing for me is I feel like it really, really helped to keep my inflammation down and it really, really helped to keep my energy up. So again, these are gonna be two really important things for anybody who's struggling with a gut problem. Again, infusions are great, but the only thing about them is that they are quite costly to get an infusion. And at one point I was having to get, I believe three to three, maybe four of them a week. Um, and at about $100 for a ch like some of the cheaper clinics that I've been to, it was about 100 to $120 to get an infusion. And then I've gone up as, I believe, as far, and this was taking vitamin C and some other stuff as well. I think I've paid up to almost $200 for an infusion. So when you're having to do that, you know, three to four times a week, you work out how much money that is. It's a lot, but it was the only thing at one point that was keeping me alive. Again, they make an entire line of lipospheric vitamins and minerals, and the other ones, I've tried them all. They are expensive, but they're amazing. I believe the lipospheric vitamin C is $42.99 for a box of 30, but this is the kicker here. Kevin and I had been experimenting with this, but then we've also actually talked to the company and they're very familiar with infusions and they have told us that taking six packets of this vitamin, which is infused into liposomes. So what that means is the vitamin is actually so, it's not nanotechnology, it's liposomal technology. So it's so small that the idea is that when you ingest this through the mouth, it's in a gel form or a fat form that you are actually ingesting it before, but they're saying before it really even hits the stomach, it's already been absorbed into your bloodstream. They're saying it's that quick. It literally is supposed to be absorbed within minutes so that if you're taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, then you're actually getting a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, not whereas if you're taking like a thousand milligrams of the powder and you're only getting 500 milligrams of that. And in that case, the other problem is it's really hard to do high, high doses like I needed and Kevin needed. At one point where we're doing infusions, you can take anywhere from 25,000 milligrams to up to 50,000 milligrams and 50,000 and more milligrams is usually being used on cancer patients to try and treat cancer naturally um, with other things like mistletoe and stuff like that. Um, but with me, I was taking 25,000 milligrams of vitamin C. If I were to try to take 25,000 milligrams of vitamin C in a powder form or in a liquid form, no doubt of ascorbic acid number one over time i probably have really bad tooth sensitivity and maybe even problems with my stomach but i would no doubt have diarrhea from that so you cannot take these high doses that are needed to treat disease in some of these forms that are out there i know a lot of people sell them in whole forms like bioavailable forms with um uh, what is it called um I can't, it's on the tip of my tongue. Bioflavonoids, I believe in stuff. I, I've tried all of it and none of it has worked as good as this stuff. So this stuff, like I said, it's highly absorbable. It is a lecithin that they use and lecithin, they do primarily come from soy, but in this form, it is, it's not gonna cause an issue for those of us that don't like to take soy because that was my major concern with it. But taking six packets of this, so 6,000 milligrams of this, had the same reaction, six to 10 packets had the exact same reaction on Kevin's vision as taking an infusion. And when I started to do this too, and I've also confirmed this with a company that they believe about 6,000 milligrams, so six packets of their product is equal or equivalent to a 25,000 milligram infusion. So if you're somebody that can't afford to go get infusions that are gonna be costing you like four to $800 a week, and you want to do these yes you're going to go through more of these boxes they're about 40 to 50 dollars per box depending on where you get them from and again i will list maybe to a link from where i get mine um, and i'm hopefully someday i'll be a distributor myself and you can purchase them directly for me 
but you know i don't think i need to go into the details of what how powerful vitamin c can be for you i think everybody knows that it's a very necessary powerful antioxidant so if that is something you are interested in please look into this company i know you will not be disappointed the only thing that i do know you might find a little bit iffy is the fact on how all these liposomal um, gels taste the way that you're supposed to take them is you're supposed to plop them into a little bit of water and basically kind of like not really squish them around your mouth unless you want to get their tooth sensitivity you put them into a little bit of water less than eight ounces i would say and then just kind of drink them back what i do is i just put i put the packet right in my mouth and then i just take a swig of water but like the vitamin C to me doesn't have much of a taste, but I know I've let other people try it and they thought it was absolutely disgusting. But if you're ever going to try like their glutathione or their B complex and even their ALA, I swear to God, some of it tastes like, you know how you smell that smell when you're getting like a perm done. Like my mom three years got perms and she would have that. I'm not even sure what that is in a perming solution, but that's what that tastes like. It's horrible. But you know what? Sometimes the things that taste the worst are the best for you and the ones that have worked amazingly for me and a lot of my supplements don't have any you know fancy flavoring and stuff like that to cover up their bad taste so it's just something you're gonna have to work past so the last supplement if you can even call it that I guess you can because they are making quite a bit of supplements out of this now is and this is going to be controversial for some people and trust me i understand because i did not dabble in any of this stuff when i was growing up and i was pretty dead against all of it and now i completely take that all back but the next one is going to be medicinal marijuana or medicinal cbd oil and the reason why i am wanting to talk to you guys about this is because CBD oil has shown many, many promising benefits for people suffering with things like cancer and helping to reverse Lyme disease, helping people to control or maintain remission that have Crohn's colitis. It is just absolutely phenomenal, so much so that Kevin and I have actually become distributors for a low THC CBD oil. So if you'd like to know a little bit more information about that, unfortunately we are not set up online yet. I don't have an online store. We have received all of our product. Um, I will leave that a link to that information down below. So if you're interested, I will leave a link, but I would really prefer if you probably just email me on that. Um, but to get into the benefits of CBD oil and, and medicinal marijuana, I'm just gonna give you a primary example. When I was really, really sick, the one thing, and I find that this is very common with cancer patients, is I wasn't able to eat because of the sheer fact that I had so much nausea. I was so ill to my stomach all the time. I felt like throwing up probably for majority of the day. So even the thought of eating made me wanna throw up. So the one thing that I did in order to get over this, and I do thank people for opening my eyes to this, was to actually vape medicinal marijuana. I, of course, and take CBD oil pills. I, of course, cannot tell you where to get the type of CBD that has THC in it or the medicinal marijuana that has THC in it. A lot of people will have to get a script in Canada in order to be able to, to get this product. However, you can find this product if you're really adamant about finding this product. Um, I didn't have a prescription for it at the time, so I had found some medicinal marijuana and I had been vaping it. The reason why I keep stressing on the word vaping is because I do not believe in smoking marijuana actually lighting the marijuana so i don't believe in combustion because combustion is a lot like cigarette smoke so when you you're almost destroying some of the, the cannabinoids and you're also destroying some of the benefits of the like the medicinal properties of the marijuana when you actually burn it kevin and i have gone out and if i can link to where we purchased our vaporizer i will link to that they are quite expensive if you want a really good one i think ours cost a little over 300 dollars um, and it's quite big. I know that they make them like really tiny and cute these days. They're like the size of like a USB key, some of them, maybe a little bit bigger. And the reason why I vaped was because there are benefits to doing both. There are benefits to vaping marijuana, but then there are benefits to taking the CBD oil. So vaping will help immensely if you are getting a lot of headaches, 
it'll help with pain it'll definitely take the edge off it'll if you're stressing out or you have other mental conditions and stuff like that that cause anxiety and for me i had a lot of anxiety throughout the years having to deal with all these chronic illnesses the other thing we found for kevin and i is on top it helped with pain it just helped immensely with all different types of pain it helped with kevin's pain when he was having the issues with the skin it helped with my back it helped with my colon um it just helped generally all over for joint my joints and all that the other thing is when i would smoke marijuana obviously the psychoactive effect of thc also induces like hunger so for some reason it would get rid of my nausea and immediately after that i would want to go out and like eat everything so this was one of the ways i was able to put on some healthy weight was by smoking a lot of medicinal marijuana at one point because like i said when i was at my sick sickest i could not work for a full year and i was vaping throughout the day the thing i did not like about taking of which is cbd to thc is that you do get stoned and i didn't obviously want to be stoned at all the time so i've switched i i've since switched over to taking a cbd oil pill that is high in cbd low in thc so i don't have that effect and i think some people might not be aware of the fact that there are forms out there that are available that will not get you stoned and you can just take CBD oil for the medicinal properties of it which is to be honest I have numerous people on in my family are on this and it's helped a lot of people for one thing one thing I've noticed is it helps immensely with being able to have a really sound relaxing sleep so if it's just something like that and you're a person that takes sleeping pills or needs something like melatonin and all that to coax you into going to sleep every night you might want to just take some CBD oil pills um, but the one thing I do want to touch base on here is that there are a lot of Lyme's patients out there that are using CBD oil and medicinal marijuana to help combat their Lyme disease or other people for other infections or cancers. And in this case, the medical research is suggesting that the only way to fight off bacterial, viral, and uh, bacterial, viral, and parasitic infections is to actually ingest. Uh, you know CBD oil not vape marijuana so for in this case yes vaping medicinal marijuana definitely has has its benefits for pain and relaxing you and sleeping and all that but it will not kill the spirochetes that are caused by Lyme so you do need to take in an ingestible form which in that case you need a CBD oil pill and the only one that has apparently been very effective in treating infection is a one-to-one -one ratio which does have a higher content of thc so you will need to find a cbd oil that has cbd and thc in it if you want to fight lime um, which is what we did for a couple of years again we have gotten to a place where we're both feeling fantastic and we're not needing that but i still do enjoy taking cannabis oil because it is just a well-rounded supplement it actually contains om tons of omega-3 6 and 9 which is amazing for you so cbd is something you want to look into if you're not fond of taking a fish oil and you want an actual vegan source of omega-3s you would definitely want to look into this one because it's an amazing source for omega-3 fatty acids um, the other thing with cbd oil um, just the ones that are high cbd high CBD and low THC can also help with your sleep. So I, we've got a couple people on it right now. I think right now as it stands, we've got about six to seven customers and they have told us all that they have never slept as soundly as they've been sleeping lately. It does take a while for, for your body to adjust and to see these effects. I think most people have told us it took about a month to start seeing these um, start seeing these differences in their sleep patterns. Um, we have another customer who is absolutely ecstatic because he had pains. Um, he, sorry, he had pains. He had my. He had been suffering with migraines for years, and he's been on this now, I believe, for two or three months, and he hasn't had one since. So it's definitely good for that. Again, it's going to help with aches and pains. Again, I'm. I'm not telling. I'm not trying to just promote ourselves here. I, we only obviously became advocates for this product and carry this product because we take it ourselves. Kevin's been using it a lot longer than me because I was until recently using the other form, which is the one-to-one -one ratio. And in which case, if you have Lyme's disease, I'm not even suggesting that you take ours. I'm suggesting you go out and you find one that is a one-to-one -one ratio and then come over to something like ours when you no longer need that, especially if you don't want the psychoactive effects of 
you know being stoned all day long but I think I'm gonna stop it right there I know this video is going to be very long but I really did want to go through that entire supplement regimen because I think after years and years and years of going through hundreds of different supplements and of course there are a lot of them that I am missing um, especially when it comes to things like Lyme trying to fight Lyme naturally or a Crohn's disease or an actual autoimmune disease there are going to be others that you need to include in this regimen as well these are just our top favorites that we have taken on a regular basis and that we still continue to take on a regular basis to this day again what i really like to do is i hate the idea of your body becoming too accustomed to anything so what i like to do is i like to not switch up my supplement brands but i like to switch up what i will take at certain times there are ones that i wouldn't consider getting on and off of like i think for the most part you're okay to take your probiotics every day and your vitamin C and your fulvic humic acid um, and your sour peptase. It's just some of the others. I sometimes what I do just to kind of give my body a break is I kind of take my stuff for like six months and then I go off of them for like a month or two and then I continue on with that kind of regimen. And it was funny because I actually talked to one of my um, uh, holistic practitioners and she actually had said to me, yeah, that's actually what I do too. I kind of, she, the way she does is that she goes on her stuff for like three months stays off of stuff for one or two months, goes on for three months, stays off. So it's entirely up to you. You're gonna have to work the regimen into your daily life. You're gonna have to try each of these supplements. You're gonna have to give them a good fighting chance because that's another thing I think I've mentioned before. I think really, if you wanna see the therapeutic benefits of supplements, you do really need to give them a, a fighting chance, which in my opinion is at least three months. I think you also, really 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 need to be consistent with your supplements in the beginning you really need to listen to your body so if something's not working with you you know stop taking it um, and try something else and don't give up because you will find ones that will work for you I remember going through certain supplements I would have to go to, through probably like I think there was oh man which ones was it like I know my probiotics I think I went through six different types of probiotics and six different types of brands before I decided to finally take this one consistently and I find this one's working for me now and the other thing is as your body goes through a, this healing process and becomes healthier you may not need to take all this stuff and not only will you not need to take all this stuff but you'll notice that your body may need other things because the way our bodies work is that you can only have so much of a certain type of vitamin and mineral and when you kind of fill up that jar then it's full and then maybe you can back off and take something else for a little while but what you want to do is supplements are completely just that they're supplements so i hate to say to people you know take this and it'll help with that take that and this will help with that because realistically there is no supplement on this planet that can be um that's going to act as a magic pill for you and supplements are just that. They're supplements to a good diet, to drinking good, filtered, healthy water, to getting a good night's sleep, to living a stress-free life. So use these things in conjunction with good, healthy lifestyle changes. And I don't doubt it for a second that you'll see benefits just like we have. So I think I'm gonna end it there. I know this is gonna be very long. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to our channel. And I guess I hope to see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.